Welcome to Karen Corla. Uh, Tánis, the research published by the British Medical Journal confirmed that this state has one of the highest increases in death by suicide directly related to the recession. As we all know, the enormous pressure of household and mortgage debt has become literally unbearable for many families. And I think this was highlighted very tragically by the death of former Priory Hall resident uh, Fiacra Daly. Tánis, the you promised personally to make the mortgage crisis a priority, yet your government is willing to allow the banks to set the agenda, and the number of families in mortgage distress has doubled on your watch. And of course, the response of the banks has been to issue 15,000 repossession letters to struggling families. We've also recently heard very worrying statements from a number of personal insolvency practitioners on the airwaves, so I have three questions for you on this subject, uh, Tánishtha. On Priory Hall specifically, will your government force the banks to wipe out the out outstanding mortgages and allow the former residents to hand back their keys? Will you give these families a fresh start? On the broader issue of mortgages, can you guarantee that no family will be denied access to a personal insolvency practitioner because of their inability to pay upfront fees in the order of five or seven thousand euros? And finally, will you guarantee that no family will be excluded from the insolvency process because of a refusal of the banks to engage with the insolvency practitioners because that family simply holds one single mortgage? Thank you. Honest. Uh, can I call it three questions. Uh, first of all, in relation to Priory Hall, uh, the Minister for the Environment uh, has initiated a process uh, which within a very short period of time uh, will work up uh, solutions with all of the stakeholders uh, involved. Uh, that process uh, has actually started uh, this morning um, and Minister Hogan uh, expects to have a, a report uh, shortly of that. So the Priory Hall uh, issue uh, is being dealt with and it's being dealt with uh, quite quickly uh, by, by government and I, I hope that there will be a resolution to that problem uh, within a short period of time. Secondly, uh, this government has made the mortgage crisis a priority. That's why we changed the law to introduce personal insolvency legislation. Uh, that's why we have brought in for the first time uh, non-judicial debt settlement arrangements and why we have put in place the personal insolvency service uh, which has just uh, begun uh, begun work. Uh, there is progress uh, being made uh, in this area. Uh, the Personal Insolvency Act, as I've said, was signed into law uh, um, uh, at the end of last year. The Personal Insolvency Service was formally launched on the 1st of March. Uh, the central bank has set targets requiring the main mortgage lenders to offer durable solutions to mortgage holders over 90 days in arrears. Uh, the revised Code of Conduct on Mortgage Arrears was published by the Central Bank uh, in, uh, in June, uh, and uh, the Department of Finance continues to engage uh, with uh, lenders. The Central Bank end of, uh, end of June mortgage data indicates that the stock of personal mortgage restructures uh, was around 79,000 at that stage. 53% um, uh, of these restructured accounts are not in arrears, uh, which indicates that the banks are taking some early measures to address uh, mortgage difficulty. Um, I welcome the fact that the central bank has also stated that over 76% of the restructured mortgages were deemed to be meeting the terms uh, of their uh, agreement. As indicated previously, the Department of Finance has more recent data from the main banks, and it indicates that at the end of July, around 1,800 split mortgages were in place, 12,600 accounts had a term extension restructure and a further 12,000 uh, accounts had their uh, arrears uh, capitalised. So progress is being made uh, on the issue uh, of uh, mortgage uh, restructuring. The whole purpose of the uh, legislation and the means that are put in place uh, is that uh, every family uh, that has a, a, diff a mortgage difficulty will have access uh, to this process uh, and uh, to this uh, system. Uh, the government will keep uh, very close monitoring on what is happening uh, in practice because the outcome that we want to achieve 
is that one by one, uh, the households who are in mortgage arrears uh, and in mortgage difficulty get their mortgage problem resolved using the processes that have now been uh, put uh, in place, which will enable people uh, to put their mortgage crisis behind them and to get on with the rest of their life. Thank you. Beverly MacDonald. Well, you're demonstrating remarkable uh, faith in those very banks that, as I said initially, issued 15,000 repossession legal letters to families, and that they believe to be a durable and sustainable solution for those families. But however, the people of Priory Hall have heard all of the terms of process and stakeholders and solutions and government commitments before. What we need to know is that these people will have the slate wiped clean, that after two torturous years and the tragedy therein, that they will have a real opportunity to move on with their lives. So tell us, please, is that option of the wiping of the slate, the necessary solution being considered? And on the personal insolvency issue, uh, Tanish, you gave us an account of the past and the, the passage of the legislation. But the difficulty is this. We have heard from the horse's mouth, as it were, from personal insolvency practitioners, that upfront fees in the order of perhaps five or seven thousand euro will be required to get their services. You need to tell us, you need to tell the public that that's not going to happen, that people won't be uh, barred from this process because of exorbitant fees of that order. And secondly, again, from personal insolvency practitioners, they have said publicly that the banks are already telling them that they will not deal with them on the basis of single mortgage holders. Now, you've let the banks away with lots. We, we all know that, that they were allowed historically and in contemporary terms to run riot and that they hold all of the cards. But surely you have something to say when those professionals who will run the service say in public that the banks are already telling them that those families who have a single mortgage, and bear in mind they represent the, the bulk of people in distress, that they won't even deal with the personal insolvency practitioners uh, to resolve their debt issues. Thank you, the legislation is all very well and good, Tanish, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that your job is done. We have to be absolutely sure that neither because of excessive fees or because of an arrogant stance by the banks that people will find themselves on the wrong end of this. And I want assurances from you today that you will make sure that on the issue of fees and the banks playing ball, that you will ensure that those things are dealt with and dealt with adequately. First of all, in Priory Hall, uh, the Priory Hall issue is being dealt with. And um, as I've said, uh, the process that has been put in place is intended to be uh, activated quickly. Uh, I'm not going to prejudge uh, the outcome of that. Uh, it is going to be dealt with uh, quickly. The people in Priory Hall have waited a very long time. I know that there were judicial issues and there were legal issues and so on and so forth for a period of time. Uh, the problems in Priory Hall are being dealt with uh, and there will be an outcome to that uh, without uh, undue, uh, undue delay. Secondly, in relation to uh, the mortgage issue, the reason that we introduced the legislation, the reason that we established the personal insolvency service, the reason that we put in place um, the various uh, methods for uh, non-judicial debt settlement is so that the mortgage problems and arrears problems that many households and many families have in this country will be resolved. Nobody is going to be barred from that process. Exorbitant fees or attitudes by banks or attitudes by professionals or anybody else is not going to debar anybody from uh, access you. to that process. We want our objective, our objective, our objective has always been to put in place the pathway and the architecture which would enable households and enable families to secure a settlement of their mortgage uh, arrears difficulties with their financial institution. That has to be done on an individual case by case basis. Progress is being made on it. We are going to continue to monitor it because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they absolutely, sorry, the let me tell them, please. let Thank me tell them, let me tell them, let me tell, let me tell them publicly. The banks, to the banks, we want the issue of mortgage arrears with households resolves and we don't want any issue of attitude 
or arrogance or any other uh, term that you want to put on it. We want this problem solved. That's why we put in place the legislation. That's why we put in place the personal insolvency service. That is also why uh, it was included in the recapitalisation uh, of Thank the you. banks uh, at the time. So let nobody be in any doubt. Our determination as Thank a government, you. we have put in place now the legislation, the method, the personal insolvency service for people to be able to resolve their mortgage difficulties, and the banks and everybody else need to get on with that. And we're going we, the central bank Thank has you. set targets for that, and we're going to monitor it month by month until the problem is fully resolved. Before I call Deputy Healy, I'd ask speakers to please respect the chair and the time limits imposed by this House. Thank you. Deputy Healy. Thank you, Kim Horla. Uh, Tarnished, uh, can I ask you, when will your government stop terrorising sick and elderly people across this country? Your government's austerity budget of this year has targeted the withdrawal of 40,000 existing medical cards from sick and elderly people across the country. That policy is now being implemented on your behalf by the Health Service Executive. And I can say to you, Tarnished, uh, that it is not possible for me to overstate the fact that sick and elderly people are traumatised and in daily fear of losing their medical cards. The postman or postwoman, who has always been a welcome sight for elderly people, is now a source of anxiety in case they are bringing that dreaded white envelope that says you are under review and the threat of your medical card being withdrawn. And let's be very clear what's happening, Tarnishta. What's happening is that sick and elderly people are being targeted by your government to pay banks, to pay bondholders, and to protect the 10,000 top earners in this country who are earning 595,000 euros per year each. These medical card holders are being specially and specifically targeted and they're in their 60s, their 70s, their 80s, and even their 90s. Their cards are not due to be reviewed. They hold fully current, fully valid medical cards assessed and approved by the Health Service Executive with expiry dates up to 2020. But they are now being punished to satisfy the greed of bankers and bondholders. Do you think that this is fair? And will you do anything about it? Have, have you or your government any compassion you. for sick and elderly people? And will you immediately instruct the Health Service Executive to desist from punishing and hounding elderly people? It has always been the case, and I'll finish with this, Kian Corla. It has always been the case that persons with medical conditions who require urgent or ongoing medical treatment have been qualified for discretionary medical cards. That tarnishta has now stopped. Thank you. And persons with cancer diagnosis and with, for instance, motor neuron di diagnosis are now being disqualified from the discretionary medical card. Thank you. I'm sure you, you're, you, I'm sure you believe that that is unfair also. And I'm asking you to ensure that that stops and that the health service executive are instructed to ensure that these, these uh, patients get their discretionary medical cards. Thank you, Frank Borla. Honest. There are more people today with medical cards than at any time in the history of the state. There are, I think it's currently around 50 per cent who have medical cards. Um, that is at a time when, as we all know, uh, there has been extreme pressure uh, on, the, uh, on the public finances. It has always been the case uh, that medical cards uh, are renewed, uh, are looked at. Um, the approach, uh, the government's uh, approach, is that medical card applications uh, should be looked at sympathetically. Uh, the medical needs, obviously the financial uh, circumstances of the uh, uh, individuals and their, uh, their medical needs, these are all taken, uh, taken into uh, account. I think we all have the experience that you know, there are individual cases that from time to time have to be pursued uh, with the uh, HSE uh, about the issue of uh, a particular, particular medical card. But I want to assure you, there is no targeting uh, of any medical card holders. 
um, uh, the, the, the government is clearly determined that the medical needs of people in this country are met. Uh, that is why uh, we have uh, worked so hard to restore the country's public finances so that we can continue uh, to meet the medical needs of people uh, who need them. And as I said, there are more medical cards uh, issued uh, under this government than have been issued ever in the history of the state. Thank you. Deputy Healy. Uh, Tarnish, you, you almost boast uh, that the number of medical cards have increased. Uh, and so they have. But of course, that is far from an achievement. That is, in fact, an indictment of your government. It is an indictment of the austerity policies that have driven people out of work, that have driven people's incomes down, and that have put them under, under medical card limits that are very stringent and have already been uh, reduced this year. So far from being an, an achievement, this is an indictment of the austerity policies of your government, uh, and it's certainly not anything uh, to, to, to boast about. Uh, you, of course, have done the usual thing. You, have, you haven't answered the question. I've asked you specifically in relation to medical cards which are being reviewed, which are not for review, and also the question of medical cases and the discretionary medical cards. You've chosen not to answer those uh, questions, and of course that's a usual tactic here uh, in this chamber. And I can say this to you, uh, Tarnish Day, you may very well get away with that here Thank in you. the rarefied atmosphere of this doll chamber, but you certainly will not get away with it when you knock on doors for local and European elections next year. Thank you. Uh, I want to also ask the Tarnishda, when, uh, when the medical card income limits uh, will be reviewed and increased, they haven't been increased, Tarnishda, whether you know it or not, since 2006. Thank you. And in fact, uh, some of these limits have been uh, worsened over the past 12 months, including uh, the question of travel to work, which is not allowed and which is very discriminatory towards people living in rural areas where no public transport you, is Deborah. available. I would ask the Taoiseach to, to immediately instruct the Thank HSE you, uh, to ensure that sick and elderly people are not targeted uh, and that medical Thank problems you. are dealt with on a discretionary basis, particularly for cancer and motor neuron cases. Thank you. Thank you.